Greetings, dear friends. Welcome to the Creative Lab Cooperative Initiative of the 2025 Initiative and the Hekal Group with the Klangshala Group. Today we use the energy of the Aquarius Festival to help us and guide us in our experimental exploratory work, awakening the souls of our nations. Thank you for joining. And I invite Uta to take us into our work mode. Yes, thank you. Hello, everyone. Welcome. This is the 30th Creative Nations Lab session. We come together as wise women and men in training from many nations. We are in training for eldership on behalf of the family of nations. Trying out together how a United Nations of the future may look and feel. Aquarius helps us to be very conscious of the networks which we build here in the lab and also, of course, as the wider world group, group of planetary stewards. The wide inclusiveness of Aquarius makes it easy for us to expand our consciousness to embrace the entire planet, the whole family of nations. And another thing that Aquarius helps us with, that we can take advantage of, is the capacity for clear thought, for building very consciously our thought forms, and doing this as, as this group, group of elders, it's like learning thought architecture. We are building blueprints for the future. So let us be aware of the lines of relationship that we draw among ourselves. They have substance and reality. It's not only a visualization, it's an actually act, a creation. And the network that we hold in place, it has a factual presence on our planet. It is there. And it's our contribution to being part of the externalization of the hierarchy. So the more we are aware of it, holding it in our consciousness, the more creative power can we, can we generate. So, so that our thought architecture has a unifying and orienting impact. We have done our Council of Elders Chamber meditation now many times already, so we have built it on the subtle plane. It exists, this space. So let us be aware of our creative potential and also of the hope that our united action, our united creating, holds on behalf of our world. So let us 
prepare for meditation. Withdraw the attention inwards to a place of perfect stillness. Breathing deeply. Grounding in our body and in the earth. We are calmly present as a soul in incarnation. Let us for a moment touch base with our own nation. Standing on our pinnacle as the conscious self of our nation midway between its personality and its soul. Feeling our love for our nation. Hello. and also our freedom from it. Speaker with speaker. Let's just hold the silence. as Judy is working out her connection with us. Judy, please uh, mute yourself on your phone. Sorry, say again. Please mute yourself on your phone. I don't know how to do it. Let us hold space. So we are holding our own personal sense of self and at the same time the note of our nation, balancing these two. Taking the outer noise as an envelope for our inner concentration. Let us now raise the vibration. And getting ready for the gathering of elders. Letting ourselves be drawn to a beautiful building set in nature.
and entering into a quiet and clear and spacious chamber. People from different parts of the world file in and find their seats, perhaps in a circle or half circle. And we take our seat among them. And we sense the rich background each brings into this space, the unique note of each one's nationality. And within this outer diversity, the same wisdom shines through all our eyes. Each face radiates benevolence, integrity, freedom. A focused silence settles upon the chamber. We sense the presence of the high beings which support and guide this work. Holding for a moment the family of nations in this safe and sacred space. And releasing now the global perspective, bringing our focus back into our chamber of elders. And let us maintain this fine-tuned field as we are getting ready for our work session. Okay, so today we will convene for the nation of Australia and we hear all the noises already coming from Australia and we hold it in our loving space. And at the end of the webinar, we will focus again, like last time, on the triangle of nations, Russia, USA and Britain and on Europe as a point of tension in present world affairs. But now, first of all, let us start with hearing from the Israeli group how they felt after they presented their our snapshot uh, last month and the blessings that we received for Israel. So I invite Helen and Efrat. Hi, hi, this is Helen. And um, yeah, months went by. And uh, the snapshot had a very big an impact on me and on our uh, um, our little group and to look at israel from the place of the observer on the pinnacle 
brought me into um, an inner peace. A peace with this entity that uh, um, that I had <laughs> I had a lot of anger towards. I could release this anger, not 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 the the care for it, but but the the anger. It's like acknowledge, acknowledging someone. Um, with its uh, you know, his, her, or its polarities, and realizing that uh, there is a way to bridge between them. Um, it was a very healing process. Um, and what, uh, what enhanced this healing a process was the feedback that came from the heart, from from the attendants who uh, who uh, voiced and who wrote uh, their blessings to this entity. I want to thank you. I'm so very grateful. Yeah, over to you, I thought. Hi, this is Ifrat <clears throat> from Jerusalem. Good evening. Uh, as Ellen uh, mentioned, uh, we've been working about this snapshot uh, very deeply. Um, and it was connected to the work that we are doing with the Jewish people for a long time, many years. So the first or uh, one of the uh, important points was uh, trying to in a way to uh, to isolate israel from the big jewish people as to say to look about to look at uh, at israel as a nation um, and it was uh, for me quite a strong experience uh, and after a meeting, all we know in, in our mind, looking from above, brought back to me uh, the sense of this um, kind of uh, falling in love with this very, very young and brave nation trying to find her way. Uh, it was not an, an easy process, but uh, very deep. Uh, and the feedback and the blessing that we got from you was really brought tears into my eyes. It was very deep, very deep healing. And um, the, the, the blessing that, that uh, I or we sent to our young Israeli a nation is uh, being a nation among nations and uh, it has to it is not so easy because uh, it, it comes together with uh, giving up some feeling of, of like we talk about uh, priority and so on but uh, through your blessing it became so possible. Uh, it, it, it was so strong, very uh, deep belief that it is possible. That Israel has a lot of work to do, uh, but finally it can be a nation among nations. And when it, Israel will do her, our work, uh, will be willing willingly accepted. So thank you all very, very much. I was stayed with tears and my uh, my heart was so open long after we finished our session. So thank you so much. Yeah. The, for me also, the, 
the preparation of the snapshot was um, was a big effort. It was like a birthing process uh, or chewing through uh, uh, this big chunk. And uh, for me, this this was a process of midwiving Israel uh, in my consciousness into becoming a nation among nations. So I feel similar to uh, to Helen, um, something like making my peace with Israel. Something is now round. And uh, hearing all your blessings uh, filled also me with hope. Okay, if if people can see this nation you know giving it a chance and 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 blessing it so so it may succeed and um it's a tall order to unite uh such an ancient tribal past with uh, with the um um the expectation the aspiration to 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 be a modern democratic state yeah, so may it may it succeed. Um, so I want to add a few words about soul blessing. It's another of these capacities that we as elders uh, um, are training, are practicing. And as we practice, uh, we will surely discover more layers to what this actually could be, a soul blessing, a blessing of the nation's soul to its personality. How can we actually approach or uh, approximate this? It demands of us an awareness of the present, of the manifested state, as well as the yet anima, unmanifest potential. So here there are also the negative aspects to consider. And here Asa Joli comes to our help that has recommended in his Psychosynthesis of Nations that um, instead of pointing directly to, to a fault, to a negative trait, to just formulate the opposite, to build an injunction for its opposite. And so this becomes a guiding arrow pointing in the direction of the next step. We could also ask ourselves when we now in the end, uh, after the Australian snapshot, we will have the possibility, the opportunity to offer a soul blessing to Australia, we could also ask ourselves, what would a master say to this nation? Or also, what could be a contribution of this specific nation to the family of nations that could guide our formulating such a soul blessing? Okay, so we are getting ready to convene for Australia. Let us center ourselves again in our own inner stillness. And in our chamber of elders. Let us join our hearts, our minds, our intuition and our will. And we invite the presence of Australia, the living entity, into our awareness. Taking a moment to sense its note. No 
Okay. So we are ready to receive the Australian snapshot. I invite our Australian friends, please. Thank you, Otto. Before we begin, I would just like to check that we have Judith Dunn among the panelists. I can't see her name. She's one of the speakers. Alexander, can you confirm if Judith is, is there as a panelist? I'm here. Ah, you're here. Okay, good. Thank Did you. You joined on the phone so we cannot see your name on the list. Ah, okay, thank you. Okay, then. So, Judith and Ants, can we, can you mute, please? And we will proceed as discussed. The presentation will be given by three members of the group, Ants, Judith, and Rolf. It will end with words of guidance from the soul of the nation to its people. The Australian group began work late in 2019, prompted by a fragment in a paper received without explanation from the Arcane School. Of the many statements in this document which took our attention, two stood out. Firstly, that there is a point beyond which a group in training cannot proceed until it has developed its own spiritual enterprise, its offering to hierarchy. Secondly, that the soul of a nation is to be evoked through soul infusion and personality integration at, at a national level. These then were to be the terms of our task. The work began with just two, then three, then five, all known to each other in esoteric work. Now there are 10, several from far afield, enriching the work. The group meets for an hour each week. The meeting is focused on the meditation, led on rotation by each member of the group. Commitment is high, those obliged to miss the meditation from time to time for reasons of family or health remain closely in touch and rejoin quickly. The heart of the meeting lies in the wording of the meditation. This is formal and strong in its occult imagery. The words tend to evolve decisively once or twice a year when the existing wording brings greater insight. Changes of substance are made only after long and careful consideration. Four times a year, the group meets with those from Canada and Denmark to reflect on our shared responsibility as a triangle of middle countries. At each meeting, the light of the triangle is projected through each of the three vertices into the geopolitical region of that nation that the light of understanding may grow among all nations. Today's presentation, though given by three, is the work of 10. Thank you, Rob. The physical and etheric body. Australia is an ancient land has been drifting slowly northward as an island continent over millions of years. The north is now in the warm tropics of Southeast Asia with three vast oceans to the east, south and west, and it carries with it the mysteries of its etheric source. Its first indigenous inhabitants understood these mysteries and lived in harmony with the cycles of nature. They developed their creation stories from the energy of the land, and those stories survive to this day. The whole landmass is a foundational place of ancient origin and essential purity, and with an enduring simplicity. Patterns of etheric energy flow between the sentinels of power through the bodies of ore and around its gems and rare earths. 
When the solar angel whispers, this land holds it deeply, resonating in the vast expansiveness of its being, its extremes of heat and cold and aridity clothe it protectively. An ancient land and people, the embodiment of that land, untrammeled by conquering armies. It exudes a constant steady beingness, vast and open. Australia's population clings mainly to the green crescent of the south and up the east coast, leaving most of the country free to escape to. Quiet wilderness, uncommon in the world today, perhaps undervalued at home. A sustaining place, capable of calling forth a larger union from the multitude of divergent parts. The Astral Body Australia's first people began to form its emotional body from the beginning of the dreaming and the living experience of the relationship between the people and the substance of the land. Black feet on red sand, ears alert and eyes alternately on the flat horizon and the patterned earth, breath singing of land and law and kinship. Night time and the stars are domed right above the warm light of the fire, calling to the dreamers. Colonisation largely swept away the delicate relationship between the First People and land. Australia's new inhabitants found the land strange and harsh and unforgiving and so very different to Europe. Adaptability and rugged self-reliance became key. The fight for survival and adaption to cycles of drought and flooding rain. The imported English class system was diluted somewhat over time by the ability for the everyday person to amass wealth and make good, though often at the expense of the native born. It was surely the lucky country for some, but not for all, as many families' fortunes were built and maintained. Even so, there is an egalitarian feel and a sense of equality that expresses as a ready friendliness. Australia is a young nation still, subject to the formative forces of youth, and yet with the First Nations people, the most ancient living lineage in the world. As a young nation, there is a sense of immaturity and insecurity of not fully finding its place. Various waves of immigrants from all parts of the world bring with them threads, new threads and customs and add to the multicultural mix. And with it came and continue to come new ideas, customs and insights. Change brings with it challenge to establish paradigms. Our woeful treatment of refugees failure to help First Nations find a voice and a willingness to accept increasing inequality of opportunity could be seen as examples of this. Overall though, the emotional current is positive and moving forward in an inclusive way. The many threads of our astral being radiating a growing sense that everyone has a part to play. This synthesis of the many strands into a resilient fabric of national identity is perhaps one of our most urgent tasks at this time as a nation. Our lack of maturity is evident in our close alignment with some of the major nations whilst often neglecting our responsibilities to our near neighbours. Recent challenges in the world have helped this nation to reflect on what matters most and the potential for progressive and inclusive possibilities. There is an indication that a finer, more sensitive nature is beginning to flow throughout our astral field as gradually selfish drive gives way to soul aspiration and the connected heart of the people. The opposing tides now flowing through the astral field of the nation, perhaps finding some quiet and harmony in a growing realisation 
of the importance of the common good. The mental body. Australia was a wild and fearsome place when mankind first made landfall in an ice age over 60,000 years ago. Many years later, with the arrival of European settlement and its starkly different ways of thinking and the classical and analytical thinking of European philosophy and science, with these came mental, a mental and physical battle with the land and so too came conquest and appropriation. Agricultural science has helped transform our dry and impoverished soils into highly productive land. Many waves of immigration since colonisation brought richness of, in diversity of expression and in thoughts and ideas of each race and nation. The soul of the nation needs inspiration, seeds inspiration to the mass of people through the receptive minds and higher thinkers who are often behind the forward thinking leaders and also through science, drama and art and the filtering down of the higher minded ideas and ideals into the general population via art, writing and media. It functions to an extent through every citizen at every moment in every situation. From the minds of the people arises the collective mind of the nation. Above the lower mind and beyond even the soul in the continuum of mind stands the higher mind, lowest vehicle of the spiritual triad. From this are received the highest flashes of inspiration into which are tapped the most advanced thinkers in each walk of life. Thank you, Ants. On the 1st of January, 1901, Australia became a nation comprising six states and two territories and in so doing, left behind its foundation as a penal outpost of colonial British power. But the flaws of its early beginnings remain, a legacy of trauma and loss, which carries a profound karmic debt still existing. However, from out of these flaws, came the basis of Australia's emerging identity. Our early culture developed a happy-go-lucky attitude, creating a complacency through what is termed the lucky country. But this is beginning to change. Many referendums and reforms have sought to establish a more responsible attitude in the nation's psyche. Australia is a land where migrants look for a better life. But with an annual migrant intake of around 140,000, this seems inadequate in a country as well endowed as this one. In our country, where refugees seek sanctuary, there are only around 18,000 presently being admitted. That some may face temporary internment for years before resolution, it reflects the severity of policy that our government maintains. As a prosperous nation, we have shown minimal evidence of generosity to those less well-off. The small share of our gross domestic product given in overseas aid surely discredits our nation. Our 0.2% compares with three to five times that rate from the Netherlands and Sweden, each with a GDP per capita similar to our own. 
the wealth of this nation has developed from its extensive land spaces. Though environmentally unsuitable for grazing, and its great mineral resources. Access to abundant water is scarce, the topsoil bare, the land vast for such population. For these reasons, Australia is one of the most urbanised countries in the world, its towns widely, often scattered. Our migrant citizens are offered work in country regions, but generally flock to the cities, they being unfamiliar with this mysterious and barren landscape. Within its own borders, Australia generates more than 1% of global CO2 emissions, with just 0.3% of global population and is the world's third largest exporter of fossil fuels after Saudi Arabia and Russia. Past attempts to develop robust legislature addressing these emissions have received support in the cities, but prompted anxiety in industry and resistance in country regions where those who work the land fear for their economic survival. Australia has an important role within the surrounding Pacific nations in failing to fully meet its responsibilities. It has created a vacuum gladly filled by a far more powerful nation wishing to extend its influence. The present government is now scrambling to correct the situation, displaying a considerable measure of skill. This highlights the dangers of failing to understand that the survival priorities of our neighbours are also survival imperatives for ourselves, although we seem to be learning this quickly. Regarding inequality of the sharing of wealth, though less severe than in some countries, it remains a problem of long-term weakness in Australia. Australia has a culture in which individual home ownership is viewed as an important measure of material comfort. But this divides the community between those who have or will have and those who do not and will not. Although a problem of most humanity, it does not diminish the significant weakness as a failing within our own nation as it sustains an economic disparity between rich and poor. Our national anthem is an immature refrain which does not reflect Australia's developing international responsibilities. Our present flag, the Union Jack over the Southern Cross, although still re relevant today, does not express the spiritual destiny of our nation and its peoples. Both anthem and flag must change. Having regarded all this, we now move on to Australia's strengths, which also mirror its next steps forward. DK writes that advice is the involutional form of a quality which will subsequently appear as a virtue in the evolutionary cycle, holding within itself the promise of strength when involution turns. Australia is slowly developing a recognition of its identity as a unique and maturing nation. It is strong, compassionate, and eager to participate 
with harmony in international relationships. From the characteristics of those early convicts and settlers, the severity of the land and its colonial masters, the nation has developed a character of survival and resist resilience. The land holds great mineral wealth. The early Gold Rush era, bringing migrant set resettlement and arrivals from other countries with their strength, energy and cultural diversity has taught us to seek unity. Animosity to different cultures is no longer widespread but within some areas of our community, it still remains. Largely, however, the population is friendly, outgoing, and helpful. Australia's international aid has been severely cut in recent decades, but there are signs that this is beginning to change. A reset of national outreach will aid an entry into the room of international goodwill. Wrongs, especially those inflicted on our first indigenous population, must be righted. A move to create a First Nations voice to Parliament with commitment to a referendum due to be held later this year, is an attempt to redress the injustices that still exist. Australia's courage and resolve was shown in a willingness to fight in loyalty to Great Britain in two world wars. That resolve is evident again in recent confrontations with China and on a higher turn of the spiral, a nation transitioning from past to present, standing firm at the threshold of its future. The people of Australia frequently experience bushfire, drought and flood these being much aggravated by land clearance, grazing and forestry. Their long-lasting effects have brought about a greater awareness in the national mind. Sustainability measures to offset these effects are being sought, including an ongoing commitment to protect Australia's great Barrier Reef. Opportunities for wind farms and solar panels are potentials Australia can develop by cultivating its abundant sunshine and vast open spaces. The nation's natural resilience and capacity to work together in the face of disaster is expressed through a community of spirit with volunteer engagement of 30% of our population over 15 years of age. It is hoped that through its strengths and possible steps ahead, this nation will reach its potential. Thank you, Judith. On the Rays and the Rulers.
On the rays and rules of this nation, no certainty can be offered beyond what is given by the master DK. The rest is informed guesswork. DK says the horoscope of a nation is distinct from that of the land or continent within which it lives. We will consider first the continent, then its people, and finally the task which may lie ahead. The land is scorched by sun, fire and drought and holds 28% of the world's reserves of uranium-235. According to DK, radiation in the mineral kingdom expresses the seventh ray. The continent's dominant natural vegetation is the native eucalyptus, described by masters DK and M as occultly radioactive and containing much fire. We live in a land dominated by earth, fire, radiation, and the energies of rays one and seven, surrounded by three oceans. Ray seven is seen not only in the fierceness of the land, but equally in the ceremonial culture of its indigenous peoples. Our First Nations understood the land and honored its demands with respect and ritual. They were magnificent custodians and remain so where they may. Writing at the end of World War II, DK gave the astrological rulers for Australia as Virgo egoic and Capricorn personality. He said these were under the control of the ruling signs of Britain. We believe this is changing and in great measure has already changed. Many among the people still responding emotionally may remain under the control of these ancient forces of Britain. But the same is not true of the nation's thinkers. These have broken away, reflecting the impress of the soul and the blueprint of the future. Nor is it true of the near 50% of the population which does not trace British descent. Some in our group sense the strong influence of Libra, preparing the nation for the path which lies ahead. However, for the present, this remains surmise. Of the rays, DK writes that ray two governs the sole aspect of the British Empire. Does this then still apply to our country? Does it reflect the task ahead? Our view is that the historical influence of the empire remains relatively strong and provides a foundation from which we are to proceed, but does not itself throw the path forward. The rich immaturity of this nation leaves much in the way of incomplete observation. In seeking to understand its ray configuration, we considered its inheritance, its observed behavior, and the task which seems to lie before it. Recognizing the nature of this task is crucial to understanding its ray configuration, as each nation faces a task fitted to its ray energies. The fires of Ray 1 and 7 burn in the land and in its First Nations and flow through its mineral and vegetable kingdoms. They also flow through the British invasion and colonization. However, we see scant evidence of these in the national soul and personality post colonization and the waves of immigration which followed. Australians today are little given to, to ceremonial order. Though readily, though readily obedient of authority exercised with care, their acceptance may be due simply to an inheritance of British culture and perhaps to a Ray 3 soul 
expressing patience and a relaxed, unworried outlook. What we can say is that rays two, one and seven present strongly in our inheritance through the land, its first peoples and the British Empire. However, we sense our nation's future role lies in the energies of ray three and four. Australia is a middle power in every sense, European in language and culture, Asian in geography and economy, neither strong nor weak in military and financial terms, placed in the most ancient of lands and at the junction of three great oceans and, and peopled from all countries. What is its task? Perhaps to model to the world a middle path from which may be seen the light of understanding among nations and from which may emerge a healing of the world of the wounds within its own borders. We sense the inherited presence of race two, one and seven and the future impress of race three and four. For the moment, we can say no more. Onwards of guidance from the soul to its people. On the, nature, on the nature of the soul of this nation, beyond what has already been said in previous sections, we will attempt only this. That the soul of the nation is reflected in those who respond to its call, and these grow in number each day. That there is a moment when the people begin to search for the soul and the soul in response begins to provide the guidance sought. From that moment, the will of the soul begins to flow through the people. The Australian group has for some time reflected on the guidance offered by the soul to its people. We sense this in the form of four injunctions in which we see a path lying before the nation. We would like to share these with you now. They will be read without comment. Warrior, foregoing comfort, choose the door with care and through action discover the path which lies before you. Magician, understand that in the house of mirrors, the one is the many and the many are the one. Sage, search out greater knowledge that insight may grow and right action follow. Mother of the world, nurture the people and all those who turn to you in need. In the fire of love and will, the presentation is ended. Let us hold the nation of Australia for a few more moments in silence.
Letting these rich impressions settle and allowing for a soul blessing for Australia to formulate itself in us. Okay, so let us open now the floor for the soul blessings for Australia from us elders. Just raise your hand on the control panel and Alexander will unmute you. And let us keep a moment of silence between the different soul blessings. This is Margot from Canada. Dear Australia, sending loving blessings on your evolutionary journey. May the hearts and minds of all your people be united. And thank you to those who speak for remembering to speak slowly. and the lower meet in the heart and radiate truth. Dear Australia, may ancients and youth come together and create a nation to embody the new Aquarian principles to point the blessed way forward for the world. This was Rosita from Britain. Please could you state your name and where you come from when you offer the blessing.
Hello, I just spoke, but I don't think you heard me. Uh, yes, we did, Rosita, we heard you. Thank you. Oh, okay. This is Kit Turin from the United States of America. Um, and I wanted to say for dear Australia, and I think if I also knew the indigenous name for Australia, I would say that as well. But dear Australia, may you draw upon, express, and share the healthy archetypes of warrior, magician, sage, and mother of the world within your nation and to the world. Ellen, please unmute yourself. Muted? Okay. So this is Ellen from Jerusalem. And my blessing to Australia is the following. Grow into the sage warrior, the magician, and um, be the mother of the world, be the insular mother of the world that you are. From the penal outpost of Great Britain to autonomous, nation. If any of the panelists would like to share, you don't have a function of raise your hand. So please just write in the chat and uh, we will unmute you.
from Uta, from Germany, Australia, embody the living wisdom of the great being, our earth, for your own wholeness and for humanity. Maria Cristina, you are unmuted. Maria Cristina, I'm ready. I'm ready. We can barely hear you, Maria Cristina. You, your sound comes from far. There's something with your uh, microphone, I guess. Can you come can you closer? Can you hear me better? Yes, much better. Thank you. All right, from the Arizona Sonora Desert, Mexico, USA. May Australia be immersed in the purificatory waters of Aquarius. Abundance of the Aquarian influx, dispersing all that hinders, enabling the life more abundantly, the life of love, the life of light to continue to emerge. Blessings. Everybody, thank you for asking us to speak. Giving this presentation has tested the group. We have come to see our nation more clearly and our understanding of how to work together has grown. Thank you for taking an interest in this nation, a nation which is relatively free from controversy. This freedom from controversy, we think is one of the foundations for the role it is now called upon to play. Above all, thank you for listening to us and for your blessings and the probing comments that you have offered. As flowers in a garden of love, in such soil we grow. There couple more raised hands. So Uta, do we have time for more or should we move on? Um, maybe for one or two more. This is Zonette from Denmark. Here, Australia. May your strength and your resilience build of all the immigrants and all the mix of your people be a strength uh, for the arrow that um, we are sending forward uh, for the future humanity. Thank you.
This is Andrea from the United States. Dear Australia, I am imagining you being cradled in the arms of the mother of the world. She rocks you and brings healing to your history of pain. She applauds your inclusiveness and encourages your creativity and inspiration that is so deep within your ancient history of dreaming. She will set you free to grow into the strong, friendly seeker of goodwill and active participation that we see as your true soul nature. The world is grateful for your beauty. Thank you very much, Australia, for this very rich snapshot. I would like to encourage everyone who has not yet tried out a snapshot to do so. It's a very deep process with rich fruit. And of course, we will be very happy to to have more, more nations to present themselves. Okay, so after this bundling of our awareness on one nation, let us now again do the opposite to expand our awareness back into planetary panorama view. And uh, we would like to invite Jonathan to tell us briefly about the Triangle of Nations work, Russia, USA, and Britain, that they are doing. And then after Jonathan, we invite Philip to tell us about the upcoming conference focusing on unifying Europe towards planetary unification. Please, Jonathan. Thank you, Uta. And thank you, dear friends. Just a few words. And from my heart in Britain, deep gratitude, Robert, Judith, Ross, as your nation brings forth a new dreaming to share with our people humanity. So some thoughts about the significance of the Triangle of Nations, United States, Russia and Great Britain. Now these words, Russia, United States, Great Britain, are really just containers and as we've just heard from the soul of the nation of Australia, we can see how subtle that is, that these three nations have a regional context, a regional influence via their rays, their historical contributions and relationships today. Now we know that we're really creating a, a circle for aligning our nations with their sole purpose. So these three nations perhaps provide that context of a container and we know that the symbol of the soul is a triangle, a triangle of subtle forces. The triangle's heart network radiates the energy of that soul purpose and of the heart throughout the sphere. So the triangle of three nations 
provides this context. And we began as a group, largely from the wisdom group in America, as a creative exchange, if you will, with the Creative Nations Lab, Uta, Alexandra, and, and friends here. And we sought to align with the three keynotes of the nations, but also with their synthesis. Now, this is an important point because as we recognize that synthesis, it is to bring forth a collective consciousness, the soul synthesis of the consciousness of humanity from the family of nations. Now, DK significantly indicated that the ray makeup, if you will, of these three nations, USA, Britain, and Russia, has a correspondence with the, the uh, let's say, the causal triad upon the threshold of the Buddhic plane. So the, we're seeking really to align with and bring forth an ideation of the, those three keynotes and their synthesis for Aquarius. We might say a new dreaming, a new vision, a new direction that can be impressed upon the intelligent and receptive minds of humanity. How do we participate in this? So generally on a Sunday, there is a, an open invitation for anyone drawn to this to contemplate these three keynotes and to be aware that this is a, an overall group opportunity to build a threshold, if you will, a movement towards the ideation of that synthesis. But also on a monthly basis, there is uh, alongside the Creative Nations work, a way of counsel, which is um, a round table, if you will, of elders, open to anyone who would like to participate it has really two or three components. First of all, to bring into our awareness the conditions that the people are experiencing. So we identify with and as humanity. And we then align that uh, phenomenal substance, if you will, to divine will and purpose so that it establishes right relationship at that triadic level. And we undertake a, a kind of what we call a mini snapshot. So we share in sort of real time our impressions as to the conditions that people find themselves and also perhaps the subtle nature of energies, etheric, astral, and mental. And the third component of the way of council is to move into collective alignment in order to bring forth a sense of impression and a repurposing, if you will, uh, as we receive that subtle impression or ideation of the keynotes and, the, and their synthesis. Um, and to complete what I can share here, it is a group work. I'm simply seeking to give a voice to it um, and to honor and respect very much the work uh, alongside all that we are contributing. And I, I love the two phrases that Uta has, has offered, sharing our heart technology, but also taking the step 
to assume a subjective leadership role as a group on behalf of the collective, as a nation or as a family of nations. And that is uh, what I would like to share with you. Thank you. Yes, there's a bit of a problem with the muting and unmuting. And Philip uh, wrote me now that he, con he keeps on losing sound. Philip, I hope you can uh, hear us. Hmm. Uh, Philip, can you raise your hand, please? I don't see him in the list. Yeah, he is in the list. I see him. Can you bring him to the to the panelists' room? He's offline. Oh. Maybe he will rejoin now. Yes, he was on the panelist list before, now he's not there. I'm mean, oh. not a panelist, attendee list. Um, here he is, I see him. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. yes. I'm very sorry about this. I don't know why my connection is playing up. I've got a strong signal tonight, but um, let me uh, keep talking before I get cut off again. Uh, thanks very much, Jonathan, and Uta, and Alex, and everyone else tonight for the, um, the Australian group, particularly for for uh, your presentation. As an Australian now based mainly in Europe, I, I really miss Australia. And so my, my prayer for Australia is may the, the Capricorn personality find a more refined integration that it may, that uh, can help it align more closely with its Virgo soul. And the famous Australian saying, wake up Australia, um, wake up the world. So um, the conference that we are planning in, in uh, for the full moon of Aries at Easter time in April, early April, you can find details about it at aquarianwisdomportugal.org. And if you go to the events heading at the top of the page, you can scroll down and get the conference details, which I'm looking at now, and which I'll draw from in my short uh, discussion about the conference. And in that letter, there's two letters actually, the first letter I sent out, which is the basis of the conference, and it's the second letter that follows that, that you can read. Um, I use a quote from the Master DK uh, that most of you are familiar with from Discipleship of the New Age. He says, workers increasingly will be drawn to Great Britain and to the continent of Europe. From the United States of America, the teaching must go out that Europe is the field for the education of the world in the ideas of a true world unity and for wise presentation of the plan. From that continent can, be the, can the inspiration go forth to the East and the West. And so having been based here for about the last seven years, uh, loosely, because I travel a lot, uh, I have recognized the need for many countries that are bound by their own um, national languages that don't really connect with each other uh, in terms of esoteric groups. And that's why the, uh, the Aquarian Wisdom uh, Centre of Portugal was created to, uh, in fact, uh, create a retreat uh, for groups in Europe and all around the world, of course, to, to meet and to conference um, outside the, the boundaries of their own nations. 
And because there isn't really anything like that in Europe yet, there are many good centers in individual countries, but not necessarily uh, completely universal anyway, as per the um, universal language of English. So um, in this, I won't go into reading any more of this letter, but there you can find more details about it if you want to read it or I've sent it out a few times in my newsletters. Um, and the diagram that's up on your screen at the moment is one of the ones that has been created for the five planetary centers. And you can see in the middle, um, smaller picture uh, at the uh, underneath the main world map, the uh, center of Geneva, which rules over Europe and the USSR. So this first conference that we're putting on as a service activity of our center is dealing with the, the most urgent problem that we can identify at the moment. And you'll notice that Geneva uh, it's, has a very broad um, jurisdiction, it goes right through uh, Europe, Northern Europe, Russia, Southern Europe. And of course, it's not that far away from another major planetary center, uh, London and New York. So um, most of the, there are several people here tonight who um, are contributing as presenters to the conference. I'm very glad about that. Uh, from the USA, from Europe, uh, and New Zealand, um, and various other countries such as Italy. Um, and we'll have a program up on the website soon to, to uh, showcase the presenters and where they're from and, and what their topics will be. Uh, we'll have meditations, not unlike the ones that are held here uh, by Jonathan and his group, uh, Uta and her group. Um, so I'm very much um, looking forward to to uh, working with them in April. Um, what else was there? Oh yeah, uh, this triangle, which I've put out in my newsletters frequently, um, has in fact the Geneva Center at the as the eye of the triangle to. Um, help harmonize and synthesize the nations at each point of the triangle. So, um, and I, I still believe this is a very relevant triangle as we go into the Aquarian age with two Aquarian souls, of course, that are part of this triangle. Um, that's about all I need to, to say for now, I think. Um, if you're interested, please go to that web link um, I'll just say it again, uh, aquarianwisdom.org and go to the events link at the, on the menu and you'll find, you can scroll down and find the April conference, Easter conference, just a few days before the Aries full moon. We figure it's pretty good timing to, to uh, initiate this activity on the Aries full moon and we hope it to be an annual activity actually um, with other conferences that are not on this theme as well that are just to do with esotericism in general as per the the philip we lost you Philip? Yeah, it seems like uh, oh, Philip gone. continues having problems with connection. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we are glad that he got most of what he wanted to say out to us. Yeah, I am very um, heartened by the growing cooperation between the different groups, our weaving in between the groups. 
and uh, this conference and the Triangle of Nations work and our Nations Lab all inter interconnecting. So let us uh, conclude this webinar with one more minute using our this opportunity of our togetherness um, to just give our energy to the Great Triangle and to Europe. So I would like to ask you for another minute just to focus back all of us in the Council Chamber of Elders. Breathing one silent breath. Realigning with our higher co-workers too. And let us hold together in our space the vision of the three great nations, USA, Russia and Britain. See them coming into right relations. Visualize the obstacles dissolving so that the energy flows freely again within this triangle. Let us will it to be so. and see Europe in the middle of it, finding its right relation with all three points of the triangle. And stepping into its function See the energy flowing freely between all of the nations involved in divine law and order. And letting this higher order reverberate as a blessing to all nations. Thank you, dear companions, and see you next month when we will convene for the United Kingdom, for Britain, on March 7th. Bye-bye. <laughs>